Yes, sir. Yes. So, guys, we are going to start with a note just, and we will, because we are a little bit behind our schedule, so we'll try to stretch uh, today at four thirty. So, we'll cover cover up most of the things of note just. So, in uh, on Monday you have the test, and the test will cover also the note just till today, right? The test is on Friday, twenty eighth. Okay, 28th. okay, it is on Friday. So I am going to start with the Node.js thing first of all. What exactly the Node.js, and what sort of applications we can build on the Node.js. So Node.js is basically we are using it for for because we are using MERN stack. So in the MERN stack, Node.js we are using for a backend purpose, right? So in the backend, we we are going to cover three things. We are going to cover the Node.js because we start with the Node.js thing. Because it is, it is basically a runtime environment. It is not a library. It is not a framework. It is a runtime environment where we we can build applications and we can build the backend application as well as right. So Node.js we are using for the backend stuff for particularly to this training purpose. So Node.js and after this Node.js we are going to cover the Express.js, which is a framework which is top which is written on top of Node.js and also we are going to cover the MongoDB as a database. Right. So let's start with Node.js. What is Node.js? So Node.js is primarily used for designing distributed application. So if you want to build any distributed application, you use Node.js. So distributed application means a application which is not running on on a one server machine. It is not running on one server machine. It is running on so many server machines it means we divide our application into small 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 servers and application is distributed actually right so application is distributed so it means a one server is not uh, belongs to serve everything there are plenty of small 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 servers and each small servers are called node that's why its name is node.js right so all these small machines are called node so it means for example if I'm going to create any application and suppose I want the end user here want to do, let, let's say a login or registration or profile checking. So it means all user stuff would be, let's say on this machine. So it means it will have a request on this machine. For example, we have orders. So orders information is coming from this particular machine. Let's say card information would be coming from this particular machine. So it means we divide our application to small, small nodes. That's why its name has become Node.js. I hope everyone understand this thing, why we are calling this thing as a Node.js. And we are not creating a, any centralized application. It means we are not creating an application which is actually running on a one server machine. Now application is distributed. So it means application chunks are distributed into small, small servers. And each, each thing is called Node. I hope guys this makes sense. What is Node.js? So uh, this is the primary definition for Node.js. Now the point is how the Node.js is actually working, right? So Bhavya is saying sharing the load. You can you can say sharing the load. You can also use a word. It is not primarily for sharing the load. It is somehow we, we can say like this. We can say it is not primarily sharing the load. It is basically distributing the things. It means if one point of server is get crash, then another server is, is available, right? So it means we are not putting everything on a one server. So it means if it is, is it is get crashed, so it would not crash the whole application. Plus there, there are so many benefits of dividing application into small, small nodes. So it means no single point of failure. That's the first thing. So it means there is no single point of failure because you have multiple nodes. Multiple nodes are running. So if one node just fails, so some other place of the code is run, uh, working, right? Plus you can scale, you can scale one particular piece of code. So it means if this this app particular application is divided into uh, this server, for example, this contain, let's say orders information, this contain, let's say user information. And suppose orders are booking. I mean, uh, there are there are thousands of users are coming and they're accessing the orders. So it means I can scale this machine only instead of scaling all the machines, right? So. Uh, Ritik is saying it is like a link list, so I'm not using a word called link list because it is somehow it is connected machines. So it is altogether linked, but it is not a link list because link list somehow is a data structure stuff. Uh, 
so machines are connected with each other and all the machines are called a node that make it make a distributed system right satish is asking nodejs so nodejs i just started this thing that is i'm saying you, you have the nodes which contain which which exist like a server for you it means your application is running on the server and you distribute the application into small small nodes instead of making a one server node right so why it is called node because we we are making small nodes and small nodes is responsible to do some small stuff so that's why we are saying we are not uh, creating an application which have everything inside it we are actually distributing the application into small small thing so you you can think like uh, a bigger company has small small departments right and each dependent department is independent unit to do their independent stuff right so that independent department is like a independent node right i i hope all of you understand this thing so the point is uh, we understand what exactly the node thing now the point is how the node is working how we can use the node js stuff and why the node js in the picture so node js is somehow is we are using for the server side thing right so for server side thing we have another choice we can learn either we can learn php right either we can learn the java either we can learn c sharp either we can learn python either we can learn ruby so we have plenty of choices to learn so why we are learning node js the first answer is it is javascript on the server side that is the first answer javascript on server side it means you are doing the javascript stuff but on the server side right that is the first answer second is we already understand we can create a distributed system easily so distributed application can be built easily third thing is because it is using a javascript stuff so it has the feature of asynchronous so it do everything in a asynchronous fashion so it, it is usually doing a asynchronous io so the input output i mean reading a file it is always async writing a file is a async database read write is an async that's why i'm using a word called async io so if you compare with a c language or c++ language or if java language you use so most of the time you are using synchronous operations database handling is mostly on the synchronous side file handling most on the synchronous side and right now the newer version of java provided the uh, new kind of io which provide the async stuff but uh, on the beginning stage they are providing the async stuff uh, sync synchronous stuff right so it is providing the async io it means asynchronous input and output they provided fourth it, it providing the event handling but this event handling is on the server side event handling so it means it has the async io plus it has the event handling right so they provide this thing so if if you just walk through with a thing which which i have written here if you just uh, walk through with the thing so I, i just clear this thing first of all and i just go to the official website of node and i just want you you will read you all of you read this definition which is provided by the node js so node js is saying it's a runtime build on chrome v8 javascript engine so it means it's clearly stated node js is a javascript runtime which is built on chrome v8 engine so it means behind the scene what they are using they are using the same engine that is a v8 as you know javascript uh, has a chrome and uh, sorry uh, chrome chrome has a v8 engine right and which is a world fastest engine right so chrome is a world fastest engine chrome has a world fastest engine that is called v8 v8 is also consumed by the node js so node js is built on top of v8 right and if if we just walk through this uh, about section of the node so they are they are giving a definition they are saying as an asynchronous event driven javascript runtime so it's they are clearly saying we are asynchronous so it means they do most of the operation in a asynchronous manner so it means if you do file handling you are reading and writing in a asynchronous manner you are doing the database thing it is in a asynchronous manner plus they are providing the event driven programming so they are providing their own event driven programming so it means it is not like we have used in the javascript click event or change event they have provided some server side events so we are using some server side events right so they have provided some server side event plus they provide you to write your own custom event so even you can create your events so if anybody asked to you what kind of language i mean what kind of feature uh, node js is providing it is asynchronous it is event driven and it is using javascript runtime i mean the wait engine right 
and it is built it is designed to build scalable scalable means when the application is keep growing so it will work for the growing application so that's why that's why it is also for a scalable application so i hope everyone is understand because we already spend so much time of as influence we have done the callback promises these stuff so it means node js is also as influence even driven we are usually used like on change click these are the event driven thing plus it has a javascript runtime it means the v8 we are working on the v8 stuff right so how this i mean how the node js is differ from others right so that that is the most important thing for all of us how it is differ from others so if instead of node js if we learn php or if we learn java or if we learn c sharp or if we learn let's say python or some other language so why we learn this node js node js saying i am a single threaded that's the first point but this is not purely true thing so it is saying i am a single threaded so single threaded means you already know it use something called event loop this is the same architecture we have covered in the node js right so they are using event loop and event loop you already know this is called single thread right single thread right it is a single thread and it is an infinite i use a word called it is a infinite loop right it is an infinite loop because it is keep moving and this loop is the responsibility of this loop is to read the event queue so it means when whenever any event is happen it is in a queue so it use event queue so all the events are going in this queue right so the main responsibility of event loop is to read the queue so it's it's an old diagram right which i created now the new thing is whenever a users for example you are on internet and you have plenty of users right so plenty of users you have and when the users request are coming when users are making a request so all the request goes in a queue remember this thing all the request of the users will go in a queue right and event loop is responsible to read the queue so it means if you have thousand of users all users requests are going to in a queue queue is read by whom by root read by event loop right now the point is if event loop is going to read a one request so it will be hang because second request cannot be take care by any, any other because it is it is reading by whom this request is reading by this event loop right now the point is if this this request is taking long time it means this request is of of a nature called intensive nature right if this request is in form of intensive work intensive work means if you are going to read a file right if you are going to read a file if you want to do any database level operation if you if you just figure it out any database level operation is primarily is a read and write operation right so can i say file read and write database read and write network read and write makes sense so it is it is primarily all of these operations belongs to the read and write and i hope you everyone you know the read and write operations are pretty much slow because if you are doing a file read and write so it means anyway you are going to read from a disk and you already know the disk is pretty much slow things cpu power is much much higher compared to the disk power so disk disk things are slow right so it means file is read from the disk database is read from the disk network is not read from the disk it is from separate but it is again a read write operation so that's why i just named it it is intensive operations right it means it take time so these intensive operations is comes under the thing under the thing called you need to remember this thing under the thing called libuv so they have a library called libuv libuv is primarily written in c and c++ it is primarily written in c and c++ and all these file operation database operation these network operations are comes in the world called threads so these are the thread and this is the pool of a thread right this is a pool of a thread so this is the new invention they have done so they incorporated with a library called libuv and it is written primarily in c and c++ and it maintain the thread pool right it maintain the thread pool it means any any uh, read operation is done by the event loop and if any intensive task i mean intensive task means to read a file it will take let's say 2 sec 2 seconds or 3 seconds so it is handed over it is handed over to whom it is handed over to this right so it is handed handed over to libuv so libuv will do their own stuff and this the libuv threads are all threads are asynchronous threads all are asynchronous threads makes sense so all of them threads are asynchronous and after this it will it will actually call back your function right so you register from here you register the callback and 
once the file is done, it will actually uh, call back your function, right? So property libuv is just a library which is written in C and C++. It is written in C and C++. It means all the low level operation. If you think about file operation is a low level operation. Database operation is a low level operation. So these low level operations is take care by a libuv, right? So low level operations is take care by this libuv thing. So for example, any OS level operation is there. It is taking care by this libuv, libuv thing, right? So it means node cannot be talked to a low level thing. It is using a libuv thing to do a low level operation. Libuv maintain the thread pools and all the threads are async. So it means any request, for example, if, if this user is requesting for some video file, right? So obvious video file is in, is in your disk, right? So the request will go in a queue. So video request will go in a queue. It is read by event loop, event loop read this and it handed over to the libuv. Libuv has the pool of threads. And this thread is responsible to read from a, a disk, right? So it will read from a disk. So it will take some time. For example, you are requesting for some bigger file. So it will take some time. So you register your callback. You register your callback. And then once this file is done, it will call your callback function, right? So your function is get called. So, so this is how this libuv work. I, I hope you understand the use, use case of the libuv. Right. So, so the point is, all the low, low level operation is not take care by the node, by the node.js it is take care by the libuv and the rest of the operations take care by the node.js right so this is how the architecture is going on how they are maintaining this thing so guys any question in your mind if you not understand anything so if you have any questions so you you can ask right so all the javascript stuff all the javascript stuff is uh, taken care by this event loop and behind the scene there is something called v8 engine right but uh, v8 is actually you know all the javascript thing is done by the v8 stuff right so in wh when we use react js when we use javascript all the stuff is done by the v8 but when we talk about the file stuff database stuff network stuff operating system stuff process stuff all this stuff is actually taken care by the libuv so Bharatwaj is uh, you are going out of track. It is not different. It is some three tier art applications entirely different, right? The only point you need to understand is how the Node.js because I am right now talking about the Node.js internal architecture. So Node.js says uh, any low level operation is taken care by the libuv. So if, if somebody asks how Node.js read a file, so the answer is there is a library libuv which is responsible to do this operations, right? Three tier, two tier, one tier, n tier is coming when you are making a client server architecture. We are not talking about the client server architecture. We are right now talking about the thing, the internal architecture of the Node.js, right? Makes sense, guys. So Nift is saying, are other languages like PHP synchronous, right? PHP is a synchronous language. Java is a synchronous language. C sharp is a synchronous. Python is a synchronous. So they are having by default feature is a synchronous. But they are they because they are now modern, so they have also the potential of asynchronous stuff. But Node.js is by default the asynchronous, so it's doing everything in an asynchronous fashion. Makes sense. So Sandeep is asking any scenario of Node.js Express JS without Mongo? Definitely. Node.js real time application is if you want to build some desktop based application like you are using what you are using VS Code. So if you want to build this VS Code kind of application. So it means VS Code is entirely on the file handling side because it open a file, it close a file. So if you want to create your own editor, the answer is Node.js because it has the file handling operations. I hope you understand Sandeep. So it is not only mean for the client side architecture. You can build any desktop based application. You can build any network based application. So for example, you want to create any chat application. You want to build any online gaming application. So you can build it by using this Node.js. Make sense? So primary thing I hope everyone understand uh, the use case of this right so bot is primarily for the javascript side if you want to learn how to write a bot uh, work on javascript style and especially on the dom side because dom is required to document or get element by id document or get element by name so it means you are actually using a dom to picking up everything so there is a puppeteer js you can use it which is entirely for the uh, bot purpose right so if you want to build any bot kind of stuff, but if you want to, um, I'm using a correct word. It is the automation if you want to do. 
then you can use this Node.js, right? If you want to do any automation, automation means you want to do some backup facility. It means the, the C drive backup has been taken on a D drive. Then the answer is a Node.js. Right, I hope guys, this makes sense. How the Node.js is working. This is the architecture of the Node.js. Now I am going to some more details. So the point to be noted is as an as a when you're using a Node.js, the first thing is you need to write a JavaScript, right? So this is your code. I am writing a word. Your code is what? It's a JavaScript, right? It this code is handed over to whom? It is handed over to the Node.js. It is handed over to Node.js, right? So we hand it over to the Node.js. Node.js does what? Node.js says if you want to do any file handling, there is a predefined module called FS. Remember this thing. There is a predefined module called FS. If you want to do any OS stuff, there is a predefined module called OS. If you want to do any, let's say, network stuff, so there is a net module, right? If you want to do, let's say, you want to access some path, so there is a path thing, right? So Node.js has these predefined modules. So can we use a word called core modules? So these are the core modules which is comes with Node.js, right? So FS is used for file handling. So this is primarily written in what it is written in JavaScript. This is written in JavaScript. Make sense? So your JavaScript code talk to the JavaScript. Your JavaScript code talk to the JavaScript, which is coming from where it is coming from the Node.js. Make sense? Now, Node just segregate two things. It segregate two things. It is saying I have two kind of stuff. One is whatever the code you have written purely in the JavaScript is taken care by the V8 engine. It is taken care by the V8 engine. You know this V8 engine is written in the Chrome, right? So they use the same engine, right? This engine is 30%. This engine is written in. Uh -huh. 30% this engine is written in JavaScript, 70% this engine is written in C++ or C, right? C++ is a C kind of stuff. But if you want to do any low level operation, file handling, operating system handling, networking, path, this thing, so there is a thing called libuv. So they use something called libuv. It is primarily written in C++ or C 100%. It is 100% written in this. So it means as a developer, as a developer, I am sitting here. I do not need to learn the C++ and C stuff. I will learn only the JavaScript and I use the Node.js thing that is already already written in the JavaScript. Make sense? And I call the JavaScript stuff internally. It is converted into the libuv. Make sense? It is internally converted into the libuv thing. I hope everyone understand this thing. So all the low level operation, this is taken care by and it has the threads. It has the threads. So it means it has a multiple thread. So I'm using a word called it has something called thread pool. So by default, the thread pool size is a four. So by default, four size is a thread pool size. Make sense, guys. So if, if you have any problem in this, so please raise your question. Make sense. Single asking Node.js not work in other browser like Mozilla. <laughs> Node.js is not for client side. So why why this question is on browser? JavaScript is on the client side. Makes sense. Makes sense. So single uh, JavaScript is for the client side. Client side thing is to run on the browser. It is something for the server side thing. Makes sense. I hope you understand. So it means it is no nothing related to the I mean Node.js is nothing related to the browser. Hmm. And now I'm moving to the Keisha uh, OS module for what operating system stuff. It, it means if you want to know which operating system we are using, this kind of stuff, we, we can get it by by this OS module. Triveni, can you show the page once again? Show sure. this is the page. Right. So can can we use this thing? These, these are the core modules and can we use a word? These core modules are the wrapper modules. Can we use a word? These are the wrapper modules. Wrapper modules means because these are it is it is like uh, sugar coated module because they have written in JavaScript, but they talk to the low level thing. They talk to the 
if you see they talk to the low level thing makes sense that's why it is sugar coated modules that's why i'm using a word it's it's a wrapper modules i hope everyone understand this diagram this is very very essential for all of you this um, bharatwaj is saying this means node js is only a library of of functions you are saying this so we can, we can say node js is a library plus environment because it has a v8 right so bharatwaj it has a v8 so it has a environment it has a libuv that's why i'm using a word not the library is the smallest thing the thing is it is a basically a environment because it has a v8 it has a library it has a libuv so it does so many things internally to so bhavya is asking v8 is for our js code right absolutely and the low level stuff is taking care by the libuv so very good karan is saying basically node js is single threaded yes but libuv is making multi threaded right absolutely right right so if anyone says is node js is single threaded yes because it using event loop so it means inside this node js it has the that diagram inside it event loop event queue so all this stuff is inside this right node js so it makes a single thread but node js is pretty much smart node js says when a request is coming i read it from the queue and then i hand it over to the libuv libuv will do the async because it has a thread pool but it has async threads and i register my call back so it means once it is done just call me back right so in case of other programming if you are not using this thing you are using let's say java right or you are using let's say c sharp kind of thing so it means on each request when the request is coming for example there, there are plenty of users if the request are coming to the server right so in each request in each request it is actually creating a threads so it creating creating a threads on each request so per request per thread right when when there is a some operation just read a read from a file so this thread this thread is responsible to read a file so this is a thread which is responsible to read a file but this thread in on top of it this one this one is get blocked this one is get blocked it is waiting for the result it is waiting for the result so it means if second request is coming so it will create another thread and that thread is again reading another file so that that is a problem with a sync because it is reading the files in a sync fashion because the files are reading in a sync fashion so they want a per request per thread but in case of node js node js is intelligent node js says i have one event loop right so it means if any new request are coming it is taking care by whom it is taking by care by event loop and it has a queue so your request is in a queue right so it means first request second request third request it is in queue event loop is reading this queue it is reading this queue and when it is reading this queue it is if it is a file operation so it is this is a thread right this is a thread it handed over to the background thread which is running inside what which which is running inside the libuv and libuv says i am async so it handed over to the background thread and now it is free it is free so it will pick the second request then it pick the third request so it means it is never be busy so it is just calling the async thread and then come back and it register their call back so it means once they have read the thing then it will call back it makes sense i hope everyone understand this thing i hope all of you understand by default node js is a single thread but libuv has a thread pool and by default the size of the thread pool is 4 so if you if you think about when you are doing read and write operation you have no other choice rather than the node js so node js is a great choice right now to do a ex extensive read and write operations but if you follow the java or c sharp kind of thing the problem is on a per request they are making a per thread right so cpu cost is huge i hope everyone understand this thing pushpindra is asking only four threads yes by default four threads but you can increase the thread size i mean the pool size you can increase right as per your requirement makes sense i hope guys everyone understand this thing so vikas is asking how we can connect react and node 
later on right because we are in a just initial stage we have written zero code and we are asking about connection between node and react so first we write some node code then we can connect it right we are right now just learning the architecture now the point is guys we are moving to this section we know basic basic fundamental only 10000 feet we know this is something on a node side right so what what we will do we'll just go to something called github right and in github i am moving to something node right so i write github node and from here this one so i am on github of node.js right not on my so if you just see what node.js is actually providing inside it so node.js says this is the important thing guys if you just see the node.js has something called lib that is a library right so i use a word called fs if you just see it has a module like fs and so so many .js 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 it means all the library stuff so if you compare with the diagram that's a practical thing so it means all the things which is coming in the core modules is goes inside a folder called lib practically mm -hmm. right so lib folder contains all the core modules make sense so that's why you are able to see path.js if you just i just take take this thing path.js os.js net.js fs.js so plenty of modules they have created right that these are the standard modules so if you compare with this fs net os path this is the same story i hope you everyone understand so if somebody ask uh, node has the standard modules where it is it is in the lib make sense so that's why i'm showing what they have written right so the first point i hope everyone clear that's why i'm just showing you the source code of the node how they have written so they have written plenty of js files predefined js files i hope everyone understand this thing now i just moving back and if you just go to the src source part if you go to the source part you will see dot h dot h dot h dot h dot h so it means it is a header file so this is what this is your lib uv thing make sense so your all lib uv is in the src folder right so it means all the c++ related code which is in the lib uv it is return where it is return is dot h so underlying so I, I hope everyone understand node.js is entirely use c++ thing i mean the lib uv thing that's why node.js is pretty much fast right it is pretty much good for doing the read write operation because it is doing on a disk level by using this c++ library i hope this makes sense guys it means i am just giving you a proof this diagram is how much it is the uh, i mean this diagram internally doing what right so it means how the things are placed so i i hope everyone understand this thing so 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 far we understand this node.js and we have the v8 stuff and the uh, libuv is doing this uh, c++ kind of stuff right so this is the high level architecture how the node.js is performing everything i hope everyone understand this thing so we understand and it's just a documentation that that the doc side right now the point number one is you want to use the node.js you need to install the node.js first of all right so uh, somebody asked why node is not considered as a language although we are comparing it to a backend languages no no i am not saying it is because it's a scripting language we can use a word called it's a scripting language because it is coming from the javascript background javascript is not a language it's a scripting language so because it's an interpreted one when you write write it and type it it is doing interpretation behind the scene so it is come under the inter, uh, uh, scripting language and but it has the environment i am using a word called it has the environment to build some new things like expresses get built so when when we talk about the jdk in java jdk is just an environment to run the java thing right same node is having a runtime environment so if you heard about jdk is a java development kit same is node is a runtime environment for building desktop building backend services building websites building web services even building iot based application right so so many kind of applications you can build so it is not only mean for one thing right that's why i'm using a bigger word that is uh, environment that's why i'm not using a word called it's a library makes sense or a language so that's why i'm not restricting to the small words i hope you understand this thing and i hope everyone understand how this is done 
So Vikas is saying React is also inbuilt in Node.js. React, some portion of things they have used in the Node.js. So when when we are learning the Node.js, we will understand where this Node.js is get fit, right? So it means if you want to create any because what you have need to understand react is just a module or a package right it's a package and it is stored on npm so once we learn how to create our own package so you will understand why react is written in there right so we need to understand how to build our own package and how to publish on npm that is the important thing so you will understand react is created under the node and then they push it on a npm right so most of the things are purely created on the uh, most of the things are actually purely created on your uh, JavaScript site. Plus, if they when they want file handling or a OS thing or a process thing or a path thing or a net thing, then they go for a Node.js stuff. I hope everyone understands this thing. I hope everyone know this is a thread pool thing. Now, now the point to be noted is you can increase the size of the pool. It is not mandatory. It is it is a four size you you can increase or decrease it because whenever you're running your node node is treated as a running process right so node is treated as a running process so process dot env when you use process dot env then you have something called uv thread pool right so you have something called uv thread pool size so you can increase or decrease the size so for example if i use thread, thread pool size and let's say i use a thread pool size as eight so now in background there would be eight threads so it is it is entirely dependent when you write this process dot env dot uv uv means lib uv thread pool size eight it depends how much concurrent operation you have um, it means if you have plenty of users so it means chances of concurrent users are high if the concurrent users chances are high so you can increase the thread pool size to serve more users i hope guys this makes sense right Bharat was asking like Java means I, I think you uh, connected this thing with a module. So module is is a reusable thing. Same like a Java beans you can say. So now the point is you need to install first of all node and you, I, you already installed because you are using a react. So it, it means you have the node JS in your machine. So the first thing is to use the node JS thing is you need to first run terminal. That is the first thing you run terminal and from the terminal you need to type node right. So when you type node, you are in the node prompt, right? When you are on the node prompt, you can type so just a minute, guys. You can type this thing that is var a equal to 100, var b equals to. So, so if you just see, the syntax is same. So var c equals to a plus b. So it is a prompt. And then you say print c. So it is going to pr print the c value. So it means the syntax of node is primarily related to the JavaScript, right? That's the best part. So now node has some new things like node, node has something called module. So module is there. So if you run it, there is a module as an object. There is something called exports. Exports, I will write it in this way, module.exports. That is the correct way. So it is an object, right? They have something called require. So that is a function, right? They have something called process. That is an object, right? So what, what I am trying to show you, there are some predefined objects. It is primarily same like when you, when you are here and you are writing here window, right? So window is what? It's a predefined object. Document is what? It's a predefined object, right? History is what? It's a predefined object. Screen is what? Predefined object. We have learned these objects, objects when we are using DOM, right? But these objects are belongs to the browser. These objects are belongs to the browser. They never work on the server side. So it means if you try to use this object window, it will give an error. If you write document, it will give an error because Node.js is not for the client side. Makes sense. Same here. If you just type it here, module, so there is nothing called module, right? So it will give an error. If you type require, it will give an error. I hope everyone understand this thing. So it means the Node.js V8 is somehow is different from the JavaScript V8 because JavaScript V8 has a support of DOM, right? But uh, Node.js V8 does not have the support of DOM. Makes sense. It, it, they have their own special objects, right? And that special object would not work on a client side. That's why it is a customized V8. I hope guys, this is clear. So that's why Node is using the V8 because most of the syntax they borrow from the JavaScript. Makes sense. Nitesh is saying video is lagging, is it? No, all right. No, sir. Like, so Nitesh, can you please check it to your end? 
Okay. So I hope, guys, you all of you understand uh, how the Node JS is differ from the JavaScript. So it means, first of all, if anyone asks what is Node, so you know why it is called Node because it is work for the distributed applications. And in distributed applications, you you are creating nodes, and these nodes are talking to each other, right? That's why we use Node.js. And then we understand why we are learning Node.js. Even there is a Java, there is a C sharp, there is a PHP in the market. Why we are learning? Because it is entirely for the async stuff. It means it is doing the read write operation in an async manner, and it is a single threaded. Behind the scene, it is using a lib UV. That lib UV is async, so it means it would not hang my application. So it means it never blocked the thing. So it means it is working on a non-blocking model. That is the important thing. But when we talk about in terms of uh, PHP or uh, when we use a Java or a C sharp, it is not non-blocking. It is a synchronous style of coding. Makes sense. So that's why we need a multi-threading system. So it means per request per thread they are creating. But here one event loop is smart enough. It is not creating a new it not creating a new thread on every request, right? So it means. It is pretty much good choice when you have lot of read and write operation. So when you have lot of read write operation, it is pretty much good because there is an event loop behind the scene, and it it would not hang up because on each request it is handed over to the lib UV for intensive operation. A lib UV doing the background stuff in a async manner, so event loop is free, and event loop can take a new request. I hope all of you understand this thing, this thing, because event loop we have already done in this JavaScript style. Async thing we have done. Futures, I mean the promises we have done, the callbacks we have done. So we are talking the same terminology here on the server side. So it is pretty much easy to uh, grasp the all the things, right? So let's start with the first example of the Node.js, right? So we are we are here, and uh, from our project here, I just cross this thing, and here I just create a new folder. Called Node Demos. So let's start with our first program. So in Node Demos, first dot js, right? And this first dot js, I will say where a hundred, where b equals to two hundred, where c equals to a plus b, and I am saying console dot log sum is comma c. So if you just see this code, you will see it is. 100% JavaScript, right? It's an 100% JavaScript we are writing. Once you write this code, now it's time to run. How to run it? Not with an HTML because it's not a client side. It is a server side, right? So just open the terminal. So view and then terminal, or otherwise this shortcut key, right? It means control and uh, backtick, right? So from here, I just go clear it and just go to cd dot dot. I mean, exit from the folder. Go to CD Node Demos. So I am here in Node Demos folder. This one, right? In Node Demos folder, I am here. And from here, you need to type Node, Node, and the name of your file. That's it. And it's showing sum as three hundred. Makes sense. So Bharatwaj is saying database connection string is defined. Yes, of course, database connection string is defined by the Node JS. So it means uh, connection. Correction URL would be in the Node.js, but the database is the Mongo, which we are going to use. So I, I hope everyone understand how to run the Node program. So it means you write a Node program and just save it with a .js file, and then run it with a Node and then file name. That's it. Makes sense. Now we, we will see how the async stuff will work. To understand this async stuff, we will understand the file handling demo. So I just use file.js. Now there is some important stuff I want to communicate with all of you. This file dot js, which we I am specifying, I want to use file handling. So so think about if you are in a C language, if you are in a C language and you want to use graphics in C, right? You want to use graphics library in C. What would be what would be your syntax to use graphics in C? What do you need to write? To use the graphics. Graphics dot edge. Right. So it means hash include. Hash include yes, graphics dot edge. So oh, what is the impact in your mind when you write hash include? In a simple language, 
what do you understand by when you are writing hash include can we say it is like importing it we are importing a library right so it means we are importing a library in our program makes sense it is same like import statement we have used in a react import statement we have used in a react same here same here we use something called require only only think about the english require so it means i want to require a library library name is fs library name is fs you already seen in your github right in github it is showing fs.js so fs is a name of a library which we are acquiring acquiring in our program makes sense and it give what it give an object so it will give an object so i just put it in an fs right makes sense now i am just printing console.log and i am saying console.log and type of type of fs right so i am just printing type of fs and node first .js, uh, not first .js, wrong a node file .js. make sense node file .js. so it is saying i am an object so what it give it will give this type of as an object makes sense so we have this object now the point is fs has plenty of function in, inside it it has plenty of function inside it right so fs dot read file right there is a function called read file makes sense so when you use os dot read file so you are going to read a file so what which file you want to read for example i want to read the first dot js i want to read the first dot js so do right click copy the path go to the file dot js paste it here that's it so it means you, you want to read a file. Now when it is reading a file, it is reading in an async manner. This point to be noted, it is reading in an async manner. So it means if you are writing here console.log before, before read. So I'm using before read, right? And here I'm writing after read, right? And in between I'm reading this thing. Make sense? So I'm saying uh, this is the path. This is the path. So I just make it easy. I can just make it easy. I say const path and paste it here. This is the path and I'm reading what I'm reading this path. Make sense. So I'm reading this path. So it is it is asking when you're reading this path because I am a async. I am async. So why not you specify the callback? So I specify the callback. So this is my callback. In callback, the first parameter is always an error. The first parameter is always an error, right? So you need to remember. And the second parameter is a content. So it is saying, I am going to read a file. It will take some time because it will take them same. It takes some time. So I hand it over to the libuv. We look, libuv will do the low level stuff. So libuv just read this thing. Once you read the file, then call my function back. Then call my function back. Make sense? So once it called my function back, so I'm checking if error. If error is checking, if error is present, so console dot log, I will print error in reading, right? Error in reading. What is the error? Error. I will print else if the error is not coming. So it means data will become console dot log. Data is comma comma content. Makes sense. I hope everyone understand this concept. So what we have learned require instant of import. There is something called require, right? So require and FS and then I use FS dot read file, which is uh, used to read a file. I specify the path. It has a callback. The first argument is error. If the error is occurred, if the error is occurred, we will print this. If an error is not occurred, then the content, then I will print the content, right? So the out outcome of this program is how the program will work. This whole program, this whole program, when you when you type this command node file.js, right? When you type node file.js, it has become a process. Remember this thing. Any program when you're running, it has become a process, right? Process mean which is actually executing. So this this process is executing. Like Chrome is running, like uh, Microsoft Team is running. So it is all are the process. VS Code is running. All are the process. Say my program is it itself is a process because it is running. So it, it is a process, right? And when this process is running behind the scene, it is actually running what EL EL means event loop. So it is running event loop, which is infinite event loop read the synchronous stuff. So when the synchronous stuff is coming like require an FS, so it will require type, then it will print type. It will print this path 
it will have the path now when it goes to this section read file when it goes to read file section it will hand it over to the lib uv so it it say lib uv take care just read a file because it is a low level stuff so you are a c++ stuff so just go and read a file meanwhile because you are reading a file i am free i am free because i am free so i just jump from this line to this line right because you are reading it in a background so you are reading it as a background so you have a thread i am itself is a thread i am itself is a thread and i am free and i am free so i will just go here when you have done when you done the reading then do this call back so the output would be type of first before read second after read third after some moment of time either the data come either the error come and you all are familiar with this concept all of you are familiar with this concept because it is the same behavior we have done for the async i hope everyone understand this thing make sense so can can we check the output so from here i just go node file dot js so i just first clear this thing and now i'm running it so if you see type of object that is the first line perfect then the second line before it perfect then this line reach hand it over to the lib uv lib uv just read it so it, this this portion of code hand it over to the lib uv mm -hmm. then immediately it it is free even loop is free so after it that is if you if you just find out this thing your server is available every time because it is handed over to wo it is handed over to lib uv lib uv will take care mm -hmm. i am not blocked that's why it is a non blocking programming that's why it is non blocking programming makes sense right and now it is saying data is and data is coming in a buffer form right so data must be print in some english form that is a problem so it is coming in a bytes form and which is not readable with us so what we will do we just need to do only one thing we just use plus operator and you already know in a javascript when you use a plus operator everything is become converted into a string so it is become a string just save this code just go back here type it and you will see the output so it is saying data is and what it is giving it is giving the output so it will read the entire program which we have written right this is we have written this is the output which is coming i hope guys this makes sense everyone understand this thing right so i am picking up the questions so bhardwaj understand import include required that same thing because they are actually just giving a naming conventions right so import in react include in c or c++ require in node js right so but the bottom line is the same thing so so uh, bhartu was asking node js include oledb uh, what does it mean i mean i think is some somehow it is uh, related to some older kind of databases i think so oledb it is something uh, i think you are asking about something in excel it is something you are embedded some object kind of stuff right so uh, when, when we are talking about in terms of uh, node js node js is using you can use rdms you can use no sql database right so it has a support of rdms as well as the no sql databases right and no sql has so many kind of varieties bharat bhavya is asking we have objects like function in js uh, objects are just a object thing right objects are created with a function because there is no class you know already there is no concept of class so objects are created with the help of functions right i hope so i mean ki jaise hamare paas jab hum js sirf kar rahe the to har cheez function ke form mein thi chahe wo number tha ya kuch bhi tha to isi tarah node js mein bhi har cheez hamare paas as an object hogi jaise require ho gaya ya aur bhi kuch hai to wo sare objects ki tarah hi honge no 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 because require is a function if you just see here uh, i just i just show you i just clear first of all this thing and i just type node and if you type require right so you will see require is a function make sense so require is a function but when you talk about the module module is an object so how i identify this is an object because of the curly bracket so even you can do it by type of 
module, so it's a mix of the things. So module is an object, but when you do type of require, it's a function. So some of the things are objects, some of the things are functions. Make sense? Like FS is an object, yes. but inside the FS read file is a function, right? So mix of the things like in JavaScript because it is using the JavaScript fundamentals. Is it clear, guys? So yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So I hope everyone understand how this thing is working. So now my question is uh, to all of you. For example, if I have this FS dot read file and I copy this thing and paste it here. And I paste it again here, right? So I am reading this file tw thrice, right? So I am writing one data is, two data is, three data is. Can everyone uh, can see what is going on behind the scene? Can everyone understand what libu is doing, what event loop is doing? If I am reading the same file. Right? I'm reading the same file or might be this could be a different file. But my question is what is going on behind the scene? I mean, this three read file is taken care by whom? Or these three files are reading sequentially or parallelly, async, blocked, event loop is reading it, event loop is not reading it. So this is my question. So if can can anyone can predict the output i mean what kind of output is coming and how the output i mean prediction is one thing and how it is going on if you know the output so the question is how i hope you understand the question because if you if you know how this thing is going on behind the scene so you actually understand the architecture internal architecture So Sandeep is saying libuv. So libuv is doing what? And it is in parallel is doing. But we are saying we'll have three different threads. Where? Three event loops or three three threads inside the libuv. Or it is, uh, it will do async or a sync. So the point is, so I am I am just uh, creating a di diagram. Just identify how this thing is working. So it means you you have the event queue, right? And you have this event loop. Make sense? So you have the event loop. So when it is reading this file, this this this, this content because it's a block block block. So this is block. This is block. This is block. This is block. Right? So whatever is get block block, it is done by whom with, with event loop, right? When it is reading to this line fs dot read files immediately it is handed over to whom it is handed over to libuv so libuv has what libuv is like have a thread so thread is like a worker remember this thing thread is like a worker and you assign a worker just read a file so it is start reading a file so because you are here now you jump to here right because libuv is doing their own stuff so even loop is free so you will move to the line number 13 line number 13 it will hire another worker i mean the thread so that's why I always remember a worker is equal to thread. So when you use a worker word or a thread word, it's same. So we we put a, another worker and this worker is reading another file. Makes sense. So then it will it will jump it will jump to the next line that is a twenty one line. So it will go to the twenty one line, right? So it will jump to the twenty one line, and on twenty one line it hire another worker. So one is doing another task, second is doing another task, third is doing another task, and it is reading it. Makes sense. Now it will jump to the next. I mean, it will jump to the directly to the console.log. So it means the output would be before read and then immediately after read, right? Before read and after read will become. And then whosoever, whosoever complete their job, I mean, either this one, either this one, either this one, because three of the threads are running parallelly. Three of the threads are running parallelly on the libuv. Whosoever complete the stuff will be come up, right? So it's entirely depends on, for example, if we have three different files, if we have three different files, so might be the first one will be complete first or might be the third one will be complete first because the threads are, I mean, when the threads are running, it is under the control of OS, right? So it is manageable by the OS behind the scenes. So uh, output of the threads can be anything, but the point is they are running parallelly. 
So if I run this thing, you will see this is the outcome. So you will see type of object before read, after read. Then the first, because all of them are of the same size, that's why the data is this, data is this, data is this. But if I change the path of all of these files, like we have the path. If I change the path, let's say I am saying just read this index.html or might be this index.html path is, I mean, it can have large set of content, so it will take some time, so it will be end up at the end. So I just copy a path and, and I just go to the file.js and I paste it here, right? Make sense? So if, if I run this thing, I just do save and I do clear and I do run. So if you just see, it is saying the read this first file, then it is. So it is giving before read and after, not not this one, I think so. This one, this one. So if you just see data is first, first it is reading this thing, second file. Then if you see it is reading the third file, then it is reading the first file, right? So this out, outcome will be depend how the threads are scheduled. So if you run it again, so if you see this time, the output would be the first file, then the third file, then the second file. Because I am saying, because this order is dependent by the operating system. So if you run it again, then the output would be first is the second one, then would be the third one, then would be the first one. I hope everyone understand this point. So it means all of these threads are running parallelly. All of these threads are running parallelly. That's why it is giving the output. So if I am if I am saying this thing, you have you are reading three files, right? And the first one, first one take let's say because these all are in a parallel fashion. Remember this thing. All are in a parallel fashion. So it is taking three seconds. It is taking two seconds. It is taking five seconds. So how much time total time they all of them will take? to complete all these three files. So it means to complete all these three files, it will take what? It will take maximum five seconds. So it means in five seconds, it will read all of these three files. Make sense? I hope everyone understand this thing. So, I hope this thing is clear. So if, if this file, somebody ask if this file path is this one if it is having the same path right and if i just clear it and run it so it is first second third because all of have the same kind of thing leaking but the point is it is just shuffling it because i told you it is because of the os if you keep running again so that's why never predict the output of the threads that is the most important thing right i hope everyone understand this thing So read file is just to read a file and because asking this thing path you need to specify and then specify the callback. So when you specify the callback, the callback will say when when the file is done by the libuv, I will call this back. If either the error will become either the console dot, I mean the else part will become. If the error is coming, it is showing the error. Otherwise it is showing this thing. I am reading the same file thrice. I am reading the same file thrice. So I am just showing you all of these three files are reading parallelly. It is reading the parallelly by the libuv threads because libuv has the four threads in the background. We are reading the three threads. Make sense? That's why it is reading the three one. But which one start first? Which one start first? First, it is done by the scheduler. So it depends on the scheduler. That's why sometime output is coming one, sometime output is coming second, third. Sometime third will be first, then the second then would be the first. Make sense? I hope everyone understand. Now, I, I hope uh, Vikas, you understand this thing, how this read file is working. So uh, one more thing I want to uh, take in care guys also, that is if you are, for example, if your event loop is running with this, 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 this task, and then your this thing is actually taken care by the libuv. So libuv is taking care of the things. If suddenly some output is coming, and event loop is busy in some other task. So whatever the output is coming, it will be go in a part of event queue, right? So it means if the first file is read, so first file 
is here. But even to be busy in some tasks, so even to will do their task. Once it is get free, it will read the queue. Make sense? So because always the first parameter is always error. So node is written in this time. So the callback first argument is always error. Remember this thing. So I'm picking the other questions. Sandeep is asking, how do you sync those threads to do uh, one after the other? Yes, this is also possible. It means if you if you don't want async stuff, but the problem, the bad side is if you do sync task, your event loop is hang, right? Because event loop is quite busy to do the sync stuff. Make sense? So if you want to do the same stuff, so I just copy this and let's say I want to do do this thing in a sync.js type, synchronous type. So I just paste it. So I use the same syntax read file, just only the changes you need to specify sync, right? When you specify the sync, it never be a callback. It never be a callback. It is only a path. So it means it simply means it will give the data. Right, so it means you will get a result, right? So whatever the result will become, so you will write console dot log, console dot log, result of one. I will print result, right? Makes sense. So I just copy this thing, paste this thing, paste this thing. So it means one after the another it will work. So in this case, your event loop is always waiting for the result, always waiting for the result. So you need to just you need to just say where I will say because I will keep changing this thing. So where result? I copy this thing, paste it, paste it. Makes sense. So result is are coming and I am printing it. So I will omit this thing because we are in a different file. So I just omit this and console after it. So the output would be like output would be like first read the first file, then wait. Then it will print result one, then fs dot read file wait, and then result two, then read wait. So read wait print. Read wait print. It is like this. Earlier, just make a call, do not wait. And we move to the next thing. Right. Meanwhile, parallel it is doing everything. Now it has become a uh, single thread because a one thread will be do, doing the one thing, right? So if you run this, for example, if, if you, your one file is consuming two seconds, so it will take six seconds to complete. Make sense? Because it is not parallel now. So from here, I will write node and I will say sync.js, right? So it is printing before read, the result of one, the result of two, the result of three, then after read. So if you run it again, the same outcome every time. I hope Sandeep, you understand this thing and this is coming in a byte form so you can use plus operator so it will give an output in your form. So another question is, is it possible that any of the thread is executed by the live view before after read is printed in the console? Uh, the point is only because event loop is busy in their stuff. So if event loop is not busy in their stuff, then there is chances. Makes sense. So it means because we have the sequential kind of code. That's why uh, event loop is pretty much busy to print the stuff because priority is of the event loop and the whatever the things are coming, it, just, it, it will go in a uh, in a queue, right? So you, if you understand this diagram, so you will know why it is happening. So event loop is busy to read the synchronous stuff, right? And if async thing, I mean async file is done, so it will be in a queue. But the point is it is actually performing this rest of the stuff. So when it, it is free, then it will read a queue. I hope you understand the point. So that's why console.log uh, statement, which is a sync statement, is never uh, get printed before the async statements. Right. Why we use const keyword to declare the variable Shagun? I use the const because I don't want uh, to rewrite my variable. For example, if fs is rewrite, somebody uh, put 10 in fs, so it will destroy my fs object. That's why I use const. So no one can destroy, no one can reassign my fs variable. Make sense? Vikas is saying, is it just like a promise? No, it's not like a promise. It's a callback, right? Promise is something. Um, I think you are asking read file sync, so it is not promise, right? It is because it's a synchronous, so it means it give a output, so it will wait. Promise would not wait. Promise will give you fake data. 
and the data will be resolved in later stage. So it's an async, but it's a sync. So it means it is like a C language. So it means in C language, you just call it and just wait it. So it is call, wait, and get result, right? So always remember, guys, this thing. Sync is like call, wait, and result, right? Or yeah, error, right? Async is like call, no wait. So you either use callback or either you use promise for this. Make sense? For non sync, it is callback again. It is not promise because it is giving a callback, right? If it, you are using non sync thing. So it is giving a callback thing. Promise is somehow it's a cleaner way, right? Promise will have the resolve and reject or then and catch. So it is not giving you promise. It is giving a callback only. I hope guys you understand this thing because Node.js is invented in 2009. Promise funda in JavaScript is coming in 2015. That's why initial stage they have not provided the promises, but the new APIs is the promise based. Makes sense. Bhavya asking, can you assign only one thread for calling same function instead of three and display thrice? So this is the one, Bhavya, if we use this kind of syntax, sync, sync, sync. So it means we are doing everything with a one thread. Makes sense. So if it is uh, parallelly, so it would not be sync, sync. So it will do the parallelly. I hope you understand this thing. Right. So the main difference between promise and async callback is uh, the dummy data provided. Yes, promise provide your dummy data. It means it behave like a sync style, but it is an async, right? So it is the uh, the style of the coding is a sync style, but it is an async behind the scene. I hope you understand this thing. So uh, Karan is saying we had callbacks, then we had got promise. Now we have async. But yes, of course, because they want if somebody if because async is something which will be done in a future. For example, if you're doing a login, you don't want to be a login in a future, right? You want login there. So you want a synchronized style that that moment of time you need a blocking. So it means the blocking is also required. If you're doing a login, so you're saying I will wait. First, first check I am an authorized user or not, right? So I cannot go forward, right? So that moment of time async is bad. So that moment of time we, we need to wait. That's why the async await is there. Right. So nift the promise and callback we already done in the JavaScript part. I just give you a glance. Callback is just a function. Promise says when you use a promise, it will return a, a dummy object to me. And that dummy object will be get resolved after some moment of time. Right. That's why we use a promise. So it means promise will give you a sync style of calling in async code. Right. That's why there is a thing called promise. So promises is you can say it's a cleaner way little bit compared to a callback. So we will learn the promises also here again because we have done in the JavaScript. So we will learn it again uh, when when we we'll use some uh, some sort of API which is providing the promises like when we use Mongo. So they provide most of the time promises that more time will use. Make sense. Bhavi asking compute the function only once this one. OK, I, this is I think you, uh, you are asking. I call this three, three times. I just want to simulate the difference between sync and async. That's why I'm calling thrice, right? Just to show you the difference between the sync and async. Because in the sync, if the first while taking uh, two seconds, so the second is also taking two seconds, so it will wait it. So the third will take two seconds, so it means total it takes six seconds. But if it is a parallel, so it will done everything in a two second. Right. I hope this thing is clear, guys. I hope you have the flavor how the sync and async stuff will work. Right. So I, I hope you also have the flavor when you are reusing this uh, file stuff. I mean, when we are reading this file stuff. So we, we have two choices, either the sync style, async style, or either the sync style. I hope you everyone you know how the libu is working, how the event loop is working, how the event queue is working. Right. So this is just a kickstart thing which we have covered right now. Now the point is if 
uh, we are using this file and suppose i am going to read a file which is very very big right which is very very big and i want to read that bigger file for example in my machine um, if i am going to read some bigger file just just a minute i will just go to read some 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 sort of bigger file so i'm just checking out is i have any 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 file which is very very big not this one so i have some big file so at least we understand this one so i have this 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 these are my recordings so let's say suppose this one 912 mb this is some bigger file so i just do right click and here let's say i just go to this i uh, just go to this right click and i do so i use my class recordings right so this is a movie file actually so i want to read this movie file right so all together it is not going to play the movie file until we have the client side because we are using a server side so it is not going to uh, play this movie file right but i i want to read this file so for here i read i just make it big file dot js and suppose i use fs and i am supposed to read a bigger file so i use const path and this is the path of my machine so i just paste this path right so i am going to read this bigger file i hope everyone understand this thing so this is the file just cross this thing so to read this file um i just write fs dot read file right i want to read it in a asynchronous style and i specify path and i specify the error and the content and then the arrow function if error so i will say console.log error in file read comma error else uh, if the error is not coming so i will say console.log data is comma data and then the content the content will become so content would be in a byte form right altogether it is not giving any alphabet and we are not going to play it because we we need to create front end for this now we have the bigger file and we want to read it right and here after this i am saying console dot log after read right after read and then comma only this thing right and i am here writing so there there would be some lagging if you just find out console dot log so there would be some lagging between the read and write so after, before read so when we run before read and after read there would be some lagging makes sense so if we if we run this code because it is going to read some bigger file so and also there is a one more problem i i want to highlight to all of you so so from here node i use first first of all i use node file.js because that's a, there is a three small files i am reading it so if you see output is right output is like immediately is coming makes sense immediately is coming because th these are the small three files now if we run this thing slightly only the slightly i have using a word slightly there is a difference because in my machine i have ssd so ssd is much fi much faster but if you try this the same code in your hard disk then you will figure it out there is a lagging because hard disk is pretty much slow so if if i run node big file.js you will see before read after read then there is a slightly gap if you understand there is slightly gap to read it makes sense i hope everyone understand so what is the problem in this read file has a bigger problem read file says i will read the file first of all i will read the file first of all whole file 900 mb i will read then i will intimate you then i will intimate you this is the content so suppose think about if you have 4 gb file think about if you have 4 gb file it never read because computer cannot read 4g file in a one go because when it is going to read the 4g file it is going to create a buffer see here it is going to create a buffer of 4gb it is not possible for a computer right because we have limited disk i mean we we have limited ram size makes sense 
so it has a limitation if you have a very very big file in my machine i do not have right now a bigger bigger file which is a 4 gb or 5 gb kind of space so uh, if you have let's say uh, 4k quality video and you want to read that 4k quality video and it is let's say of 8 gb it is not possible so now this moment of time we need a word called streaming i hope everyone heard about this word streaming so it means streaming is absolutely suited when you have a lot of bigger file right your file is much much bigger then you use the word called streaming so it means streaming means it is like a river river is streaming the water right same we are streaming the data so we can work on very 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 large files if you are using a streaming funda right so if you are going to read 5g file 10 gb file it is possible by using a thing called streaming fs has another thing so can we say read file is good for small files can we say this thing read file is good for small files if you have very very big files you cannot read it so that's why you need something called streaming so we will use the word called streaming so i just commented on this thing and i am here using fs fs dot read stream so this will create something called read stream create read stream right so this will create a stream and i will pass a path here makes sense and what you have now you have the stream i hope everyone understand the word called stream and this will help us when you when we are going to stream a video from the server so think about right now we do not have server when we learn the express we we have the enabled servers functionality because it has a api to build things so we use the thing called stream there right through stream we can streaming the videos we can streaming the audio so because audio video files are big one so we cannot use read files so think about you are on a youtube and you are going to read you are going to let's say you want to watch some movie and that movie size is of let's say 8 gb and uh, it is taking plenty of time to load let's say 15 minutes to load and you just see 5 minutes video and you think it's it's uh, it's not up to mark so but the point is 15 minute wait and then you will see the video and then you discard the video after watching the 5 minutes so what do you want you want only the 5 minutes or 10 minutes that get streamed so at least i can watch 5 to 10 minutes then if i like it so continue the streaming otherwise i discard it makes sense but we are saying video is lagging i hope no sir yes. bavya can you check it at your end right so i hope everyone understand the word called streaming thing right and streaming is when we use a streaming we use stream.on because stream says i am on right that's why the word is called on on means it's an it is like ad event listener it is like ad event listener makes sense it is like ad event listener so on is a shortcut of ad event listener so the point is when the streaming is there there would be an event when there is a streaming there is an event so event is say is this streaming is going on yes yes so i will say data so data means streaming has the event called data streaming has an event called data if the data is coming so it means data is coming in a chunk the data is coming in a chunk so i will use a word called chunk makes sense so it, it is same like think think about this you have a water tank at your terrace right and suppose you have a water tank of 5000 liter right so you have a water tank of 5000 liter and now you you are going to use a water tank on your i mean you want to use our tank water in a kitchen right so in in a kitchen you have a tap right so i'm just saying this you have a tap right and this tap is connected with a pipeline to the water tank right so it is connected with a water tank so think about this 5000 liter is like a big file so it is a big file and it is connected with a pipeline pipeline is like a stream so that's there, there's a word is stream right so it is using a word called stream now in the stream when when you have the stream so stream is basically used so stream is basically used to flow the water right flow the water same it flow the data right and on your kitchen when you open the kitchen when you i mean sorry when you open a tap when you open a tap this is like an event data event has happened and now what is streaming it is streaming some amount of water that's why the word is called chunk makes sense that's why the word is called chunk so the chunk is happens i hope everyone understand this thing what is the meaning of the chunk 
right so it means 5000 liter water is coming in a chunk that's why there is streaming is going on when the streaming is going on when the streaming is going on you will get the data so you will get the data in this form console.log and chunk chunk is comma chunk so you will see chunk chunk is coming right so chunk is coming and some amount of time the chunk is not coming so stream dot on end it means now all the data is exhausted is end up i mean the water tank is empty now so i will say console dot log so all are these are the predefined events right like click change these are the predefined events these are the server side events so from here i will say uh, now the point is stream is end I hope everyone understand this thing. Now, if try this thing, so now you will see the data is not coming a one shot. It is coming immediately. It is coming immediately, and it is keep coming, 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 coming in small, 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 small chunks. So it is well suited for bigger file. You will see, right? This is happening behind the scene. So coming, 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 and then end. Make sense, guys? I hope streaming. If you try in other programming, you will understand. How difficult is the streaming? But if you try in a node, node is best suited for streaming. So if you try to build any video streaming website, you are trying to stream the audios. This is well suited because it has the facility of the streams. Now, for example, this is a read stream. You want to write it somewhere. You want to write it somewhere. This is also possible. So you can you can even write it somewhere. But we are asking chunk is predefined. No, chunk is just my variable name, right? So I just want a meaningful variable name. That's why that's why I use a word called chunk. You can specify x, y, z, anything. Because data is an event. This chunk, if you see chunk and arrow function, that's a callback. So it is a callback. It means whenever the data is coming, it will place the data in a chunk. So you can use x, y, z, anything. I hope, guys, this thing is clear. This is how it is working. Now, now the point is, for example, you want to copy the data. For example, I have this bigger file in my machine. So Vikas is asking how many events? Plenty of, right? Like, plenty of events are there. So stream dot on data is there, end is there, open is there, close is there, right? So th there are plenty of events. So recommendation is if you want to go in detail, plenty of methods are there, plenty of events are there. So my recommendation is if you want to read this thing, go to the Node.js dot org. So from where you can read all the standard modules. So I am recommended do not read all the because you will forget it. Because when I was fresher, I am doing the same mistake because when I read it, I read all the entire documentation. Okay. So when I read it for one week, I remember, but next week everything is get forget. So the best best thing is to read it. Just create some small projects. When you create some small projects, so we actually implement the API. You know which API fit for my application. So now the point is, if you want to go to the documentation, this is docs area. And in docs area, it is showing you API reference documentation. Click on this API documentation reference and you want to read FS, let's say. So this is the file system. This, that's a full form. So just go to the file system. So in the file system, for example, you want to read the word called stream. So it has a read stream. And if you see close, open, ready. So these are the name of the events they have created. So if you just go in a read stream, so they are suggesting what sort of events they have created, right? Plus they have suggested what kind of methods they have, right? So it has plenty of methods inside it. But these are which one is fitted for your requirement that is important. So it means any anyway when you when you all of you are get higher in a company, company is most interested on the core concepts. I mean the base fundamental concepts are pretty much crisp. Like if somebody asks is node just a single threaded and lib you make it uh, multi-threaded how the entire system is working and if somebody asks how the event loop is working how the promises how the callbacks are working i mean the base core core fundamental must be the clear thing right how the require is working so these things are actually required for cracking the interview intro never pointed out on particular api i mean just explain me this particular API. so they are only asking th those which are frequently used and frequently will become when you're doing the practice. When doing the practice, frequent APIs will become, right? And the some some of the specific API will become during the project requirement. So when you're working on some projects, specific API will be called based on your need, right? So that would be your learning. 
It means I learn this particular API because of this need, right? So let's say I, I, I just match up this thing with some topic, but before this, I just want to cover up the right stream also. So there is a something called W stream. I will define fs dot create right stream. So like I have the read stream. Same here, I have the something called a right stream. So in right stream, suppose I want to write it somewhere. So here, if you just go user amid document flutter recordings. So I just go here, user amid documents flutter recordings, right? So let's say I pick my bigger recording. That is the 912 MB and I want to clone it, right? I want to clone it. So stream is get fitted. So think about when I clone it. So I'm reading it and then I'm writing it. So if you're using if you want to build a YouTube, so it means you are reading it and then you're writing it. The only thing is you're writing on the network. Right now you're writing on the disk. This is the only difference, right? So when you're writing on our network, so we will learn some API which is for the network. Make sense? So I copy. This is the path I have. Now I have this path, so I want to make a clone of it, right? So I just do copy of this. This is the location and I am just I just want to show this is the only one file 912 MB, right? That, so I want to make a clone of it. So I just name it clone, right? So I named it clone. So it, it will create a clone file of this. And I named it path two, right? And in FS2, I specify path two. I specify something called path two. So it is actually giving me a second path and I want to write it here, right? I want to write it here. So from here, because I'm reading it, see here, I'm reading it. So I'm reading what? I'm reading chunk. So the best part of this, I can write a chunk. That, that's the beauty of this. So I can use a write and then I will specify chunk. So I'm writing the chunk. So it means reading a chunk and I'm writing a chunk. Make sense? So I'm reading a chunk, writing a chunk. But if you compare with a read file, if you compare with the read file, read file has a problem. Read file is actually going to read a file. Once it's, it completes the entire reading, once it completes the entire reading, then it will start writing. So for reading, it will take, let's say, three seconds. For writing, it will take another three seconds, right? And it, it would not be work when you have a bigger file because bigger file get me fail because there is no such kind of bigger buffer to store that bigger file, right? But stream will be work because stream will read the chunk and then it will write. So it, it means the performance is much higher, right? So I am writing it. Once it is right, so I will say, once it is done, I, I'm saying stream is end, copy is done, right? So copy is done. So let's say, let's try this. So clear it and here I'm running it. So it is doing this stuff and then later on saying this copy is done. Let's check this out. Now, if you see, there is a 912 MB file, this one, the original one, original one name is tic tac to logic and this is the clone one, right? And clone one is created right now, 338 and 912 MB. I hope everyone understands this thing. I hope guys, everyone know how this thing is working and not just know this is somehow it's a bigger code. So not just know the pain of a developer. So what they have done, they have done this thing. This is the magic guys. They have done this magic. The magic is they are saying specify the read stream. Read stream is what a stream, right? And that's why I give you a story of a pipe. I mean, I give a water tank and pipe story. So that, that's why they have used a word called pipe. And then I say W stream makes sense. That's it. So this is they have. If you see the beauty of the code, they have just specify read stream pipe to the right stream, right? Read stream pipe to the right stream. So they are making a pipe between these two and whatever the code I have commented out here, they are doing all of this code with a single line. So Shagun, the stream right stream you not understand right stream is same as like read stream read the chunk right stream is write the chunk right so it is writing the chunk so if you just closely see this code so whatever i am reading it the same chunk i am writing it so it would be like you read let's say 10 bytes so i will write 10 bytes so it will be very speed right so it means if you if your file is let's say bigger one i am reading some bytes and hand it over to the right so it means it is it is doing the reading as well as it is doing the writing Right. So that's why I specify line number 17 to line number 23. It's a read and plus write code. But I am suggesting also there is a shortcut that is called pipe. So if you use the pipe word, so it will do internally 
this read and write right so it means line number 17 to 23 it would be get commented if you use the pipe word i hope guys you are, all of you understand i hope shagun you you also understand what is the right stream is doing any question guys so far i hope everyone understand the use of this fs and how this pipe is working it's a, just a shortcut plus they have also created something it means we have learned this thing so they they have in in stream they have created a one more thing because in stream when you are reading reading the chunk you are reading the chunk suppose so that there would be, there would be some size of a chunk right there would be some size of a chunk it means you are reading some file it has a size as a chunk so you you can modify the chunk size this is also possible this is also possible you can modify the chunk size so for example uh think think about it this is my guys somebody is asking anshuman is asking about the pipe pipe is anshuman you you can think about when you are reading it so if you understand this code then the pipe will be very easy thing it is like a utility so when you are reading it so you are reading a chunk right so in, in a bigger file you are reading a chunk sport portion of data when you are reading a chunk so you are writing a chunk right so when you are reading a chunk you are writing a chunk and it is keep reading writing keep reading writing right so and after it it will end the stream once the everything is over so pipe will say it is a predefined function which internally does this thing which internally does this thing so instead of writing this bigger code you will write only the word called pipe so it will read the data i mean it will read the chunk and hand it over to the write stream so internally it will do this stuff that's why the pipe is there so pipe you can think like there is a one stream there is a one stream and this pipe is get corrected so it will read from here and write it from here read from here and write it from here so that's a utility of pipe i hope you understand now the thing is uh, this is what we had we have understand the read stream and the write stream word and now uh, now the point is some some moment of time you can have the issue i, I i'm just showing you one scenario for example you are doing the read stream right rsi i am writing and write stream you are doing it right so there is a there is a thing called chunk right so chunk would be some some size right let's say its size is some x unit right the size is some x unit for example you are working with some customer uh, that machines are not much more very good so you want to update the size so it means you want to go to some lower size so customer says i do not have the bandwidth so think about you are streaming a video on poor network and because you have the poor network so your chunk size can be very your chunk size can be very it cannot be very very big makes sense so if it is not very big right so if it is not very big for this so the point is you need to update the chunk size so how you can update the chunk size it has a parameter you specify the curly bracket and there is a word called higher watermark right high sorry high watermark so high watermark says how much size you want for your watermark right it means how much data you want to send it as a chunk so for example you you are saying i want 20 bytes of data only i want 20 bytes of data only so it means 20 bytes of data will be get read only and the 20 byte of data will be write only i hope everyone understand this thing so now it is a very slow process now makes sense but it is it is well fitted for some poor machines or poor networks we can say so if if you run this this stuff if you run this this kind of stuff so you will find it out so because we are using a pipe right and after pipe it will say it will say how it means i just i just commented out this instead of pipe at the end i will say after the pipe after pipe copy done right after pipe oops after pipe copy done this is i have written right and what i want to show you without this first of all without this first of all right without this for see the effect without this so we'll actually understand the performance 
so before read after read pipe is done right pipe is done so copy is done makes sense now if i because i know this is a default chunk size behind the scene it is using default chunk size makes sense now you can you can increase or decrease the size this is possible but we are asking the same thing so but we either you can increase the chunk size or you can decrease the chunk size it means you are on a better machines and better machines can have better bandwidth that moment of time you can increase the watermark size so high, higher watermark size can be increased so for example in this stage i will write comma paste comma paste now if you see this thing if i run this so it will it will hang here right it is taking a lot of time because it is just reading 20 bytes and then sending 20 bytes then reading 20 bytes then sending 20 bytes makes sense i hope everyone understand what is the utility of the high watermark so this this utility high watermark hello hello so i am saying ki agar jaise mai high watermark jo right ke liye hai i keep it 40 aur jo read ke liye wo 20 hai to kya hoga fir file is corrupted in this case because if you if you read let's say of uh, 40 bytes and you are going to write 20 bytes so 20 bytes of data will be lost so it's vice versa different 40 for the writing and 20 for the reading so it will it will work but it is it is it has the buffer of bigger the only point is this it has a bigger buffer but it is taking less data right so it is it is more like for example you you are traveling uh, from delhi to C, for example delhi to chandigarh and you are uh, traveling with two people but you hire a bus right so it means the rest of the things are free so it means it will take memory but it is uh, it is it would not corrupt the file but it will drill down the performance because the buffer size is bigger so if you are using 20 here 40 here so 40 bytes is there but it will only consume 20 bytes right so the problem is your 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 buffer is uh, wasting right because you have the 40 bytes but you are actually capturing 20 bytes makes sense but if you do opposite of it your data will be get corrupted makes sense okay sir now the point is uh, this parameter I, which which i teach you you are going to use this parameter under the supervision of some it team right never use by your own so it is not the decision of the developer to use 20 bytes or 40 bytes because developer never know uh, how, what what is the bandwidth of the network it is only tell by the network guy so network guy tell you you have the higher bandwidth so consume this this much of bytes or send this much of bytes so it means usually we target for different different customer for example i just give you uh, my example i work for some bigger bank and i also work for some smaller bank so that bigger bank has a very very good bandwidth let's say it has a 2 mbps bandwidth so we build the system according to this but there is a smaller bank which is from the nigeria it has the capability of this only the 64 gb kps so we need to drill down it right and this is actually telling by whom the it guy i mean the network guy so network guy suggested uh, this bandwidth would not work if you are sending to mbps it would not get consumed so as a developer you must know how you can change it but what would be the value it is actually justified by the network guy because they are testing on the network makes sense i hope guys you understand this thing so this is only for you you know how to change the chunk size but what would be the preferred one this is decision by the network guys i hope you all of you understand this thing so uh, this is the read and write stream funda we have done with this so vikas is asking what is the default size of the watermark it depends on your machine to machine i mean the 64 bit machine different size 32 bit machine different size windows has different size a uh, linux has different size right because it why i'm saying this thing because if you have if you have a good machine and uh, you you have if you heard about the 64 bit address buses 64 bit data buses 32 bit address buses so it, it depend on your hardware right it means on which hardware you are using so that's why there is no particular default size there would be depend on the machine to machine right but on the based on the network what sort of data you are going to send based on this you will decide either i use higher watermark of 20 bytes or of 40 bytes or of 
1024 bytes as depends make sense i hope everyone understand this thing so nitish is asking some more different question what is the purpose of reading and writing files can anyone anyone give an answer what is the purpose of reading and writing file can anyone answer this thing is the file because in college we learn c and we learn file handling in c++ we can do the file handling so lakshya is smart lakshya says streaming videos because you already know i give an answer it's a video streaming is done with this right so in put output so the best example is so uh, nitesh is asking this thing so i just give the best example that is nitesh if you are opening any website any website even google so google is sending what it is sending the page page is what it's a file so behind the scene file handling is going on if you open flipkart the home page is coming coming with lot of images so it means all of this images are sended it means it is reading and writing makes sense so it is all about the file handling so if you don't know file handling no server is get created makes sense i hope everyone understand this thing so you cannot create any server you cannot do any streaming you cannot upload it you cannot download it <laughs> makes sense that's why we are doing this file handling stuff database is basically used to store the records makes sense so you want to work on the data then you need the database right but why are not started with the database the the point is first you learn the database so we will first learn the database then we will start it makes sense i hope guys this thing is clear to everyone so from now i am moving so we have the flavor of fs we are we ha we know how to read and write a file and we have the flavor uh, this thing that is fs is belongs to the standard module so somehow if i don't want to use standard module i want to use some third party module is this possible yes it is possible you can use some third party modules as well as so how you can use the third party modules to using third party modules i just clear out this thing just to use clear this thing i want to use some third party module so i will create a one first first of all i create a different folder so i just make it consume right so i make it consume folder and i want to use some third party third party means which is not provided by the node js which is provided by the external external is what external is npm so npm js is providing it right so npm js is providing some modules so we can use those modules in which scenario these modules comes in the picture let's see so we have this consume oh, oops i think consume is become something else so consume must be folder right so that is consume uh, demo i will create it this is a folder right so i want to consume something right for example i just give you uh, where, where this third party modules come in the picture for example i have a fs module right and i think i need to just go to this here and i just make it demo 1.js right so from here i write fs equals to require fs right in fs there is a special method called fs dot watch this is a very good method so in this watch i want to watch a file i want to watch a file for example i want to watch is anybody change something in a file so let's say i have this index.html right in in the in index.html i just uh, copy a path i just go to this demo.js and here i use const path i use something called const path i paste this path this is the index.html right and i am when i whenever i make some changes so even i can create a file file let's say i just named it score.txt right and i'm saying india score is 20 runs suppose this is a file for example you want to create a uh, cricket website which is responsible to show the cricket score right so i have some guy who is actually watching the match and maintaining the scorecard in this file score.txt so score.txt is to uh, maintain the score so the point is th there is a guy who is operator who is actually maintaining this file it means making the entry in this file now my program must be smart enough who know if this file is get changed if this file is get changed so run this file so i just say score.txt so i want to detect is this file is change so that's why there is 
term called watch. That's why there is a term called watch. So watch is basically needed when you when you want to detect the changes. It means is there any changes happen in a file? If yes, if yes, the answer is yes. So I will say which file? The file is code.txt and code.txt path is this. So it will tell me there is some change. If there is changes happen, so I use a callback function. I use a callback function and in this callback function, I specify console.log and I'm saying score has been changed. So somebody's changed the score. So I just want to show this thing, right? And here I'm saying console.log waiting for waiting for changes. Make sense? Waiting for changes. I just go here and from here uh, what is the folder name consume demo right so i just go cd dot dot cd consume demo right i am here in consume demo folder and from here i will i will say node and i will say demo one dot js see this program is waiting waiting for what waiting for changes so i just go here in the score.txt and i will say now india score is 50 runs and this then i save this you see it detected it detect automatically score has been changed now india score is 150 runs make sense i, I hope everyone understand this thing 350 runs right 450 runs i hope everyone understand what is the benefit of this file so it means how the live scorecards or news website is working by using this mechanism. So they are actually watching your file. And when they are watching, they, they can identify this file has been changed. If this file has been changed, can I write this thing? If this file has been changed, just show me the score. To just see the score, I will write const fs equals to, not, not the fs, I will write say fs dot read file and sync. So I want to read a file. So I will say path, just read it. And you have the content. So let's say let content. I will receive and print the content. So I will say console.log. I will say print a content. So I want to convert it into string. So I'm saying content. I will say score plus content. Make sense? So I just do control C. I will do clear. I want to run this thing, score.txt, I just go here. In this score.txt, I will say India score is 100 runs. Just saying India score is 100 runs. India score is 200 runs. India score is 300 runs. I hope everyone understand. Yes, Lakshya is saying it means there is a one thread who is actually work like a watchman, right? It is watching it and it's keep watching it. If there is change, just tell us. If there is change, then tell us. That's a benefit of the watch. I hope everyone understand. Keshav is asking read file sync versus read file. Its name says its story. Read file sync, it's a synchronous. The read file is asynchronous. That's it. Make sense, Keshav? And you know the sync and async. All right, so we are here. I hope everyone understand this thing, but fs.watch has their own issues. Point to be noted, fs.watch has their own issues. So who is telling there is an issue? Just go to the NPM. Just go to the NPM and ask. Ask for a module called Chokidar. Some Indian has created this thing, Chokidar. And you know, because I use a word called watchman, because watch is, is basing a watchman, that's why the name is Chokidar, right? And if you see this line a neat wrapper around node.js right so so many contributor are there who build this chokidar module so if you just go here so it is saying i am a neat wrapper of node.js fs.watch so it means if you want a better version of the watch go for the chokidar right and you need to install and if you see there are plenty of people are using it right and it is a mit license it's a free one right so it is saying why, why you don't use watch. So it is saying does not report file name in Mac OS. It means if you're on a Mac, Mac operating system, it never tell you on which file this thing is happen. That is a problem, right? Does not report event at all. So it means it 
if you are using some sublime text on on mac os it would not sometime it is run twice right emit most changes are rename so it means on rename time it will work so there, there are some problems which is actually suggesting by whom excuse by me, sir uh, some students are leaving before that please make an announcement the class is still 4:30 okay okay uh, students we have the class till 4:30 so please don't leave it uh, because your test is scheduled on this august uh, 28th august this friday and for this test the syllabus will come to the class which has been covered till 4:30 so please there uh, stay in the class sir you can just make an announcement students are then also leaving okay guys uh, usually we have the class till 4 o'clock but today we have the class till 4:30 so it means 4 to 4:30 is not the doubt session right now we have the class right now 4 to 4:30 right so after this you will leave otherwise you miss the things in a test also right that's why if somebody friend is leave so please call them and rejoin it so now where we are we are here um, the point to be noted guys here this is the fs dot watch which i am telling you there there are some issues in fs dot watch that's why there is a thing called chokidar module they have created so you can use this third party module right so i am just taking up the question chetan is asking when we are using crick api at that time also it will go like this right? of course so if you are using a crick api kind of thing and you want so it means chetan if you figure it out it's a mix of two things streaming plus watch it will watch plus stream because you, might be in cricket you can have the large data you can have the ball by ball record right so you you can have all running records right so you want to show the score card thing so plenty of things so you can watch in stream watch in stream right it is like this venkat is asking can we trust all the packages no you never trust right so point is always trust on the licensing who is providing the licensing right plus always trust on this how many downloads is going on always trust on how many open issues are there right like it has a 47 issues and how and also go to the home page of this so through this you can figure it out whether you trust on this or whether you not makes sense so sandeep is saying uh, wondering why the official node js people did not fix this issues because they are quite busy to build new things right and they know somebody build it so why we reiterate the things so that's why they believe on dry principle don't repeat yourself if somebody done this so why will so they are believing on building new things makes sense so that's why they have not fixed it somehow some problems they have fixed but if somebody create the things and it is use, using by most of the community so they leave it there right so chokidar is just a neat version compared to but fs dot watch will work makes sense so it's a, it's a just an open source con contribution i mean it's a mozilla contribution which is going on so the now the point is can i use the chokidar right so there is a module called chokidar i i hope everyone understand this thing now like we are using console dot log we are using console dot log everything is coming in a white color so suppose if i want not everything will be come in a white color uh, it is it must be come in some different colors so if you want the things would be coming in a different color then there is a module called chalk so you can use a module called chalk so you can use the thing called chalk there so it is a terminal styling so you, you can do the style i mean you can use bold italic colors all these things from the third party so now the point is node js has some some of the things which is somehow the third party things i mean somehow some of the things are the uh, pre built that is a standard thing some things are third party things right so the third party things you are borrow from where you are borrow from the npm so you using a npm and from there you can borrow the chalk either you can borrow the chalk but how now the question is how how i can borrow this so to borrow this thing you first of all you need to write the thing called npm init npm init will create a special file called packet.json this packet.json is a meta file which contain the meta information of your file meta information of your project so you write npm init it will show you what is your package name so let's say i want the same package name so i press enter it is saying which version you are working on of your project so i press enter so i want to keep this is just 
for learning. This is just my description. Can you so repeat I, the npm init part? Why do we use it? npm init is basically a packet.json file. This is actually required. It contains the meta information of your project. That is the first thing. That is the meta information of your project is actually in your packet.json. So if you are going to use Chalkidar, if you are going to use Chalk, these are the third party modules. So these dependencies are also given in packet.json. So for example, if you are working on a collaboration mode, you are working in a company and you use Chalk, for example. Your other developer is using, let's say, Chalkidar, right? So you are using Chalk model, he is using Chalkidar. Now you push the changes on a Git. So what you will push? You will not push libraries because library must be in your local machine, right? So you will push, push the packet.json. Packet.json has the dependency information of both. So I mean the Chalk and as well as the Chalkidar. Both dependencies are maintained in the packet.json. So packet.json is a meta information file of your project. It contains the project name, project description, project version, project scripts, and project dependencies, right? So you will share this packet.json, let's say to this developer, and this developer use a special command called npm install. npm install read the packet.json and install the all the required dependency which is missing on this machine. Same thing you will do. In your machine, you will type npm install, so you have the dependency. I hope you understand. So it means whenever you whenever you create a project and you want to share your project, so you will only share the source code and the packet.json, right? To the other developer. You never share your libraries. Your libraries in your machine, right? Like when when I share the React code, I am not sharing Node modules because Node modules con contain the libraries. I share the packet.json along with the code. So it means when I share code and packet.json, so it means in your machine you can type npm install and you get all the dependency of React in your machine. I hope everyone understands this thing. That's why we need to create the packet.json. So if you are not creating a packet.json, dependencies install in your machine, but you cannot share it. Right. So in a real project, we need this thing. Now it is asking when you type this npm init command, when you type the npm init command, it is asking for the package name. It is showing the first version. If you're not giving, so you press enter, it will keep this version. This is a description of your project. And now this is the entry point. Entry point means which one is the entry file. So you have only one file. So for example, you have 10 files. So which one is, is a starting file of your project? So right now demo one dot this because I have only one file. Test command, if you want to do any testing, then you have the test commands, right? So I just press enter. I, I'm right now not doing any testing. Git repository, if, you are, if your code is connected with some Git, not so press enter keywords if you want to place this code or over the npm so how people will search your code then there would be a key there would be some keywords so let's say i'm saying consumer demo that would be can be my keyword it's entirely option and here i will write author name license let's say mit or any license if you are going to require it. so i just keep it isc and then if it is this, all the information is correct. So I press enter, it is yes. Then what will happen behind the scene? It create this packet.json. In packet.json, you have this name, you have the version, you have the description, you have the main file, you have the scripts, right? You have the keywords, you have the author, you have the license. All this information is here. Now, if you want to use any third party module, which is coming from the NPM, you need to just go to the NPM search the desire module then go to the search result like let's say i am going to the chalk and here is the command like npm install chalk when you click it it will be get copied once it is copied just paste it and press enter once you press enter then you will see there is a dependency will be installed you, you will see here this is the tag is coming dependency so it means it is saying dependency is coming with the along with the version so if you want to change the version you can change it from here and in your machine, there is a special folder is created node modules. Inside the node modules, you have the dependency, right? Inside the node modules, you have the dependency of this. Make sense? I hope everyone understand this thing. Is it is it clear, guys? The use of this chalk along with the version. Now, if you share, if I share this code, so what I will share with you, I will share demo one along with packet.json. And in when you copy paste this code from the Git, in your machine, when you create a folder, any folder you will create, and when you are on the packet.json, just type npm install. You will have the same dependency in your machine. Make sense? 
that's why the packet dot json is there that's why we are creating this packet dot json so i hope everyone understand the dependency funda now you have the chalk now the, now we start the benefit of the chalk so if you are using a chalk because it's it's a third party which is not coming with a node js because because there are there are around i think there is around 12 lakh modules nearby 12 lakh modules so if i just show you uh, in npmjs.com i just go here and let's say i do sign in let's say if i sign in with this thing so you will see around 13 lakh modules i mean 30 lakh package it has so so many packages that that's this is the beauty of this node so why the node is much much popular in the market because it has 30 lakh modules right i mean 30 lakh packages for different different purposes purpose. you have learned chalk right that is a one package in npm right i hope everyone understand how the why the node is so much strong because it has plenty of things now here we are using chalk and i use several times so i i read this documentation of this chalk so it it must be first required and whenever you want to print anything like waiting for changes so i will use chalk dot red so i want to see waiting for changes in a red color right then if i use score has been changed so i will use chalk dot bold so it is a formatting right so it is it is doing the console formatting console dot log does not have this kind of features so if i use chalk dot green so it would be like this now if i run clear this thing and if i run this code which is in consume demo so i will write here node demo one dot js so it is saying waiting for changes in a red color say so i just go in a score and i just write 400 runs so score has been changed coming in a bold and it is coming in a green color i hope everyone understand this thing so somebody created this chalk module and it is quite popular in the market and people are using it make sense so i hope everyone understand this thing how the chalk is working so same if if i am saying how you can use chalkidar so the same step npm install and then name of the chalkidar so best is rely on the copy paste so you will not misspell this thing so chalkidar go to the chalkidar and here is the npm install chalkidar so try this one by your own how the chalkidar will work so you install the chalkidar once you install it you will see packet.json has this module chalkidar right so now if you want to use this chalkidar module so read this documentation so it is it is saying first require it then it is saying what you want to watch so this is the benefit it is saying watch dot dot means current directory will watch so when you use all that's why it is much much bigger than fs dot watch so it is saying dot current directory on all means all files it means any file if you change it this will run so it will intimate you in in current folder if you have thousand of files any file if you change this will work right nitesh is saying chalk is just to make developer happy no chalk is very very important module because if you are doing testing of your application if the test cases are passed then it should be coming in a green color if it is not it is coming in a red color so it will actually good for terminal kind of logging because most of the developer work on the terminals right so developer see the error in the color form end user see the error in a gui form i mean the there is a alert prompt will become there is some dialog box will become this is for the end users but for the developer it must be the color coded that's why the chalk is there right so when you are when we are working on a server and our server is crashed on a server i mean our server is running and it is get crashed so there would be some logs and the if the logs is coming in a red color so i can in thousand of lines i can see this red color is is the failure condition so it, you can think it's a rescue for a developer to identify the error clearly in lot of text right that's why the chalk is there i hope everyone understand this thing so try this chalkidar here and chalk i already cover it right so i hope i think uh, i should wind up on this point of time because um, i talked so many thing you need to digest lot of stuff for today still we have uh, so many things on a node js to be complete so we will complete on this but 
uh, we will take the test on basis of this because we have at least we have the kick start of the node.js we have completed so many things on this so we have cover up the fs api we have cover up the chalk thing we have we understand the uh, how the node flow is going on behind the scene we have no the lib UV event loop all of these things are working so anshuman is asking what did worked on mac yes it is worked on the mac but the point is on some certain event for example i am watching the rename option so there is some problems right so that moment of time it will generate it would not trap all the events because on when you are watching a file you can you can have rename option you can have uh, delete option so it would not watch all the events that is the issue that's why it's an it's not a neat wrapper so that's why there is a neat wrapper called chokidar it chokidar has so many kind of options if you just see the documentation it will say you can watch a folder and you can watch inside it you have different kind of files you want to watch all the files or you want to watch some text files these are the options they have right so even you have the doubt so you can raise your queries right so this is the problem shagun you use c use console.log c right it would not c you will when you write c's semicolon it will only work when you are on a node prompt right it means when you are here then it will work right you can directly print c if you have the c right like i do not have the c for example if i have hindered so i can do like this but when you are writing a code you need to write console.log otherwise it would not work make sense so guys if you have any doubt so please raise your query meanwhile i am i am uploading this code so today node code i am uploading so 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 this one consume demo and node demos right and score.txt this these three files i am sending So Nidhi, I uploaded a zip file. If you just check out the zip file, because uh, somehow the Git is not going to upload the nested folder for today. So that's why I make a zip file and then I upload it. So can you check the uh, zip file? Is the zip file has everything or not? Because same thing I am doing it right now also. I am sending zip file because zip. I mean Git has some issues, right? So this is a node code folders I created, and I am making the compressed version of this. So I am uploading today. I am uploading zip because it is not working on a Git side. So the zip version for the React as well as the Re the zip version for the your node, right? So you need to unzip this thing. So any question, guys? If you have, so you can raise your queries. I hope you understand why we are using the node thing, because in now upcoming session we are going to learn the node stuff. Can you just show me the screenshot? Sir, sir, what's the name of the file? The file you have uploaded today? Node demos for Node, and for React there is I think uh, first app something. If you just oh. see, so this one, first React app zip. This is a React one, and for Node that is Node code start zip. Right, always refer the timestamp so you will you can figure it out when I load it. Like it is a yesterday code, it's a Saturday code. Right. So. Yeah. सर अभी आपने थोड़ी देर पहले एक कोड बताया था जिसमें three functions थी same उसको call कर रहे थे. 
तो सर उसमें आपने कहा था हमने कहा था कि ती, तीन अलग अलग थ्रेड्स बनेंगे सर हम कुछ ऐसा कर सकते हैं क्योंकि हम सेम फंक्शन को अगेन एंड अगेन कॉल कर रहे हैं तो सिर्फ एक थ्रेड हम यूज करें और उसका जो रिजल्ट है वो कहीं मेमोरी में स्टोर कर दे और उसी को जब कॉल हो रहा है उसी को शो करते जाए उससे टाइम भी ताकि टाइम भी बच जाए और थ्रेड भी एक ही यूज हो यस इट इज पॉसिबल यू यू नीड टू जस्ट ब्रिंग द डेटा एंड जस्ट स्टोर इट इन सम वेरिएबल एंड व्हेन व्हेनेवर यू मेकिंग अ सेकंड कॉल जस्ट फर्स्ट चेक द वेरिएबल इफ इट इज नॉट अनडिफाइंड सो ग्रैब द डेटा फ्रॉम द वेरिएबल दिस इज द ओनली थिंग यू नीड टू डू इट इज लाइक अ कैशिंग ज्यादा <laughs> there is a there is a question mark on top of it if you use a caching mechanism now the problem is of the synchronization for example if somebody change the file in a disk so you have older copy in your hand make sense so you need to check it is the time stamp is the same when i cache it that's a issue of the caching so if you cache it i hope you understand sir so, yes sir Thank you for the session, sir. Right. So Sandeep, we have allocated a, a certain amount of time for React, so that's why we are not able to cover the hooks. It's because we have a uh, four hours allocated for this. We, I, I think, we have spent six hours for the React. So, on six hours, we have covered this thing. so now we are moving to to the node okay so i'm going to send the screenshot so when i'm saying console.log and then bracket inside c is inside the console.log then it will print it would not print by c right so you need to write console.log and the c would be inside the console.log then it will work this kind of syntax only work on terminal right it would not work on when you are running a node i hope you understand <laughs> 